the SB721 and SB326 needed a page that anybody can go to and just learn from it. And so what we did is we put all kinds of information on there. What is the law? Where is the law? Why the law? Where did it come from? Um, what was the rationale? Who's supposed to do it? Who needs to do it? So um, let's go into it. So if you go to balconyservicesnetwork.com, that's all you need to know. In there, you're going to have the following information. First of all, we got a, a TikTok. Uh, a, 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 it's not TikTok. A deadline. Guys, you have 293 days. You were given six years to get this done. And you only have till January 1, 2025 to get this done. Completely, including any repairs. Everyone is supposed to be certified by January 1, 2025. It came into effect January 1, 2019. Six years. Everybody. And when it came on, when it came on in 2019, as a result of, the in, in, of what occurred in Berkeley, what happened was we went into COVID mode. And COVID mode ate up three years of our lives. And that's where there was a, a zone that nobody knew what was going on. And now that everybody's just becoming aware of what's going on is where 2023 came into play a little bit, 2024 came into play a little bit. And right now, one year from now, it's the deadline. So let's see what the legislative response was to the deaths in Berkeley, all right, that happened back before 2019, eight years ago. Let me show you what, what caused this. Go ahead, let's play. We're going to turn now to that deadly balcony collapse in California. The death toll Raise is the growing. At least six people killed when a small balcony crowded with people collapsed. The dramatic images tonight, that balcony before and then after. Landing on the balcony below, the people on it then sent plummeting four stories. Those students celebrating a 21st birthday party. And tonight, questions about the construction among them. Was that wood treated and was it a factor? ABC Cecilia Vega in Berkeley tonight. The fourth floor balcony was packed with partiers when it came crashing down overnight. All the balconies broke. Students, many visiting from Ireland here to work for the summer, falling more than 40 feet to the street below. We got three patients on the ground need uh, treatment. Uh, they're on back floors, but need that for treatment. Emergency crews racing to the scene just blocks away from the UC Berkeley campus. Fellow students heard the horror. I was just a loud crash and then silence for a couple of minutes and then just scream. That was all I heard, really. The building, not even a decade old. Here's the balcony before and after. Completely detached, perched precariously on the balcony below. Six people now dead, seven other students seriously injured. You think 13 people were on this balcony at the time of the collapse? Yes. That's a lot of people. Yes. Right now, we're just trying to figure out what caused this collapse. The weight limit on that balcony, 3,000 pounds. The 13 students would have had to weigh more than 230 pounds each to reach that. Experts say dry rot may have weakened the wooden joints if they weren't properly sealed, water soaking in until the wood was ready to snap. Witnesses say those students were all celebrating until it ended so tragically. One of the girls had blood on her knees. A couple of the girls had no shoes because they couldn't get back into the apartment. They told um, you they were here celebrating. It was a 21st birthday party. And that balcony still hanging out here behind me tonight. The other balconies in this complex off limits as investigators try to find out what happened out here. The owners of this building releasing a statement to us tonight, David, saying that resident safety is the highest priority. All right. <clears throat> so it was because of that. I think it was a total of seven deaths, many injuries. Again, all of them were Irish kids here on summer uh, work plans. And uh, what occurred was a very tragic. So the legislature uh, came in and said, we need to do something about this. And not just because of that thing that happened in Berkeley, but any wood structure on any building uh, that has uh, wood as a main a main fabri uh, fabrication point. Um, so they wanted to eliminate the concerns about dry rot, wet rot, um, carpenter ants, termites, and anything else, okay? So what they came up with is if we scroll down, we have the Senate bill, okay? And what, when you get a chance, you wanna read the Senate bill, you can, and it's very simple. No, it's very long, 
but here's the here's the rules. You if it's three families plus, so there's a Senate Bill three two six, and there's a Senate Bill SB seven twenty one. SB 721, SB 326 is the same bill. One is for HOAs and apartments, and the other one is for condos. Uh, what's the what's the cycle? Every six years, you got to do SB 721s, and every six years, the, your first S, uh, SB 326 must be done in six years, but your subsequent condo inspection on these balconies is every nine years. How they came up with these dates instead of a five-year cycles, which is the norm, is beyond me, but that's that's what it is. Who can inspect? Design professionals. You can have a civic, um, a, a civil engineer, a structural engineer, a registered architect. That's a design professional. Or others acceptable to the building official, such as contractors that are licensed, uh, inspectors of buildings, and anybody else that they say, hey, these people can form inspections, especially if you're a specialty company that spe especially works on just that. Should you ever have an a situation where somebody is doubting, if you're a city official and you doubt this specialty company, you can always have them have it uh, peer reviewed by an architect and or an engineer. So that will help you have more confidence on the document you're receiving, which includes photos and videos and a plan. A plan that says, this is what you got to do because the fire escape is not good or the balcony is not good, uh, or it says it's certified. So well, let's talk about what you need to do. There's two parts of this inspection that you need to do. And we're going to show you what these look like. And that is the top of every structure that is wood-based. Okay? Um, and again, three family plus is the rule for SB721. And S3 through 6 is you have to be three family plus. Does that mean you, if you're a two-family or a single-family, you shouldn't be examining? Well, that's up to you and your insurance company because um, if it's no, re not required by the, the the Senate bill, you should have two families and one families, especially to satisfy their insurance, inspect these balconies, not the fire escape. The fire escape has its own rules. This is balconies, all right? And what what are we talking about? So let me let me tell you what we're talking about. We're talking about, you don't have to highlight, I can see down here. Um, inspections of the decks, stairs. Where's the where's the exact? All right, I'm sorry. There he goes. Balconies, decks, porches, stairways, walkways, any structures that extend beyond the exterior wall of a building and which have walking surface that is elevated more than six feet from the ground level are designed for human occupancy or use and rely in whole or in substantial part on wood or wood-based products for structural support and stability. So if all of a sudden you have a building and it has metal, okay, and cement slabs, sometimes they don't, they don't want you to touch. This bill is really for rotten wood, which is affected by water. It's affected by termites, carpenter ants, and any other animals that could live inside an area um, such as, you know, squirrels and chipmunks and birds. You know, these things will all affect the structural integrity of a wood platform. A lot of times when you have metal, that's why some of these high-rise buildings with nothing but metal and metal railings and metal, metal, and cement and cement, they're not subject to an SB 721, okay? A report must be submitted, and they have some date, the, some timelines here. Sometimes the timeline for submittal is 45 days from the date of the inspection. So please read which inspection you're doing and what needs to be reported to the city official and what makes, what needs to be given to the, um, what do you call it, to the uh, the owners of the building, okay? And a lot of times these they need, these need corrective action, and the corrective action could be 30, 60, or 90 days and that must be in writing from the city official, depending on the complexity of the situation. Okay? So if there's any emergency repairs, as it clearly states here, 15 days, okay, to make it functional again. And you have to notify the building department and the fire department because if it's not functional, not only do you have to keep the tenants from getting on to this, you have to let the fire departments know that should an incident occur in these next 15 days, that they're not going to get on this balcony or on the, use this railing in any way, okay? So let's get out of the uh, coat. So 
When you go there, you're going to have plenty of read. If you want to know a lot, go here and let's read. Let's talk about the class, uh, and we have the, them back here in Sacramento's fire department. One so of the more- things we did is we taught a class on fire escapes. Where the tail end, we basically went in and talked about SB 721. The very similar class that we have here. And it's up to you to go on further and get more information. And all you have to do is just read it. It's all right here on this one website that basically lets you get as much information as possible. Do we have anybody have any questions on, again, this is all on a website. You just click and go and just listen, learn. Uh, let's go back to the thing. Let's Let's scroll down a little bit more. Let's take a look at this. Um, this is a seminar. We just taught this seminar not even three weeks ago, four weeks ago at most. And what was this? This was a class on a balcony that fell on a Honolulu hotel on the waterfront where a 1,500 to 2,000 pound um, slab of cement railing with a small piece of iron railing on top just dislodged itself by itself. In the beginning of the day, it was 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, And so we're going to show you what that looks like in a second. But the class, again, it's on YouTube if you want to go see this class. And so uh, does does, uh, does Hawaii have a balcony inspection program? Nope, they don't have one. And so all these hotels, you have to be, you have to do it yourself. You have to, but their mentality is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, this thing fell all by itself. So let me give you, let me tell you what occurred on this. So just before, that's stop right there. That's good. That piece of cement and the railing, which you can see to the left side over here, right? See that left side over here? I'm going to notate. See, an exact copy of that was used to be in the front. So two-thirds of this, the, this railing is made of cement. And one-third of it is a piece of railing on top to equal the 42 inches high. By itself, because a fat pigeon landed on it, a small baby earthquake could have occurred. A strong wind, all by itself, it fell five stories, okay? And then it, what it did is it came down, hit a first-floor roof, and then it pirouetted off that first-floor roof, and there it is. That's where it fell from. Came straight down and landed on that roof that is uh, sticking out down here, that roof right there. And again, this is a uh, this is a hotel on the beach. It pirouetted. It basically ricocheted off that uh, off that first floor, and then it went straight into the sand down below. That had about twenty people there. So let's take a look at what we're looking at. There's about ten people with their beach blankets out or their beach towels out in front of this. There was about ten to fifteen people behind this, and it had a five foot track of sand to land in between perfectly and avoid killing or injuring anybody on the ground. And look what it did. A couple people got scrapes, but nobody got injured. Nobody got hurt. And nobody knows why this thing fell from a building that is 50 to 75 years old. It is probably about 60 years since they built this section of the Moana hotel, which is, the oldest hotel, okay, but not this wing, not this this new piece they built about 60 years ago. The hotel is 1909 or 1905, the original hotel. But this high-rise extension that they built, they're called a surf rider. Basically, that thing fell all by itself, hit the ground. So go back to that picture of it on the ground. Okay, and what is that? It fell perfectly between the two seats or the two lounge chairs with about 20 to 25 people. And when it hit the sand perfectly, it kicked up enough sand that it actually buried itself into the ground of sand. And it bent the railing on the very top. And that sand on top of the cement, and this all weighs anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 pounds, didn't hurt or kill anybody. Okay. So they're now trying to implement a program in Hawaii after this seminar that was taught to basically get the hotels to at least examine the the, the railings and the cements that are facing the ocean because they get the worst impact every day, 24-7, seven days a week, 
when it rains, it pours over there. And we have quite a bit that's happened here. All right, let's get back to the website. Let's play this. Um, a lot. Uh, this is going to be Alan, the architect that uh, works with us here at Balcony Services Network. Um, and he did this. And this was just an explanation for people on um, what happens when you have a balcony and a fire escape on the same piece. So listen to this. Explain a little bit about the SB 326 and 721. Uh, laws that were initially enacted for California balconies based upon the uh, the failure of the balconies at, the, at Berkeley, California. So now you're required to inspect on wood, wood frame balconies. We basically need to do a little destructive testing, careful destructive testing. We'll punch some holes in there so we can get back in with the camera and take a look at the structural members. We're looking to see that there, if there's any dry rot on the members that are, that are or uh, deterioration and, and any kind of moisture uh, deterioration or mold. Uh, also that there's any kind of termite damage. So they're to be inspected every five years. So we're gonna inspect this, this area, possibly a little bit of the railings and then, and then the same thing up here. So All right, so we're gonna go back a little bit. And what's that mean? I can't inspect this wood. The only thing I can do is some destructive testing. And what that means is I got to come in there with a core, a core drill, three inches round or four inches round. And I got to do, I got to do the whole length there. So every 16 inches in between studs, so I have to find out where the, where the joists are. And in between each one, every 16 inches, the whole length of that 10 to 12 foot piece, I have to drill these holes. So the first initiation with these, there's going to be some cost associated with a contractor going there and drilling these penetration holes so I can see inside. And so once those holes are done, to not have holes remaining, they need to have a little cap, a little round cap of three inches or four inches so that you can do this every six years from now on. So step one, drilling holes is going to cost a few dollars from a contractor to expose the hole so that design professionals or others acceptable to the building official can go back there. And what do they have? And where's the hole? The hole tends to be more towards the back because that's the most critical part. So we break it into thirds. One third in from the back, we're going to drill a hole. We're going to put a snake in there, and we're going to look at the most critical part, which is up against the building, with a snake camera and we're going to look forward with it and we're looking uh, to, to the front nose of this platform so we can identify on a platform just exactly where it where the problems are and so some some of these balconies are going to have problems in the middle some they're going to have problems on the left side and some of them are going to have problems on the right side which means we don't have to destroy the whole thing we just have to remove some sheetrock and or uh, um, stucco which gets very thick, one to two inches thick cement stucco. We have to open that up so that repair work can commence if needed. If everything is good, we're looking for dry rot. We're looking for wet rot. We're looking for uh, termites and we're looking for, um, carp I mean, uh, termites and carpenter ants. We also may find squirrels in there. We might find animals in there that have built nests and do whatever. And those things hold moisture and they could damage up portion of the fire escape uh, and all the balcony. Now, remember, balconies don't tend to have membrane damage from the top on the whole thing. Very rare. Unlike Berkeley, which was membrane damage that allowed water for 10 years only. Brand new construction. 10 years and water. There was enough water coming from a damaged membrane, which I don't know how that happened, to rot the whole rear of this cantilevered system. And then it just ripped off. It broke off. The structural members of wood just, they were dry rotted, wet rotted, um, and they just, it just broke off. Usually impossible for 10 years, usually 35 years, 45 years, 50 years, but it all went, right? Killed seven and injured many more. So now, now as part of this code, I have to, I have to inspect. So I need to get into it unless it's all open. We have open platforms, great. It's easy, less cost. I can see everything. Take photographs, you videotape and you talk so that not only the owner knows what to do, 
the city official knows what's going on and how dangerous something is. Okay, now let's continue the video and let uh, Alan explain the membrane examination. California enacted a law that that requires that balcony, wood balcony, inspect, uh, wood balconies be inspected uh, every five years. So I'm just going to comment. We're not conducting that today. I conducted a fire escape inspection on the railings, the the stair, and the ladder, and the ladder to grade. But just from my general uh, view of things, this has been recently painted. Um, not seeing any kind of uh, major cracking on the walls or the stucco. And again, we're going to need to investigate further. Uh, and probably what we're going to need to do is to cut holes. Um, actually, I'll, I'll just use this as an example, even though that's not about. You know, we will cut. We would cut a vent-sized hole, the length of the of the balcony, and then put a camera back in. That's one way we can do it to check the, the wood framing. So what we're basically looking at is uh, is that there's no drywall or terminal damage, termite damage, and that uh, the system is safe to be occupied. So I'm going to stop the video here for a second. But as you can see, there's a visible crack going on here. And what and how long has that crack been there? Did they just recently seal it or has it been open like that? Because that crack and all the other cracks I see here are a concern. And the only way I can tell the city official or the fire official that everything's okay for humans to be on there, including firemen and fire personnel, um, is I got to, how long has that been like that? So that's a membrane inspection. We also have a railing inspection that is happening on most of these platforms that are a combination of, you know, just railings that are 42 inches high. But in some cases, they have a wood base. Look, there's about 24 inches of wood covered with stucco and then a baby railing on top that equals the 42 inches. That needs to be examined. And a lot of times, nobody is laterally load testing these like we would in a fire escape. There's no lateral load testing going on these balcony rails, but they're not saying whether it needs to be done, what's appropriate, what's or not. But I believe every railing on these SB721s and SB326s, the railing must be laterally load tested. And it's not that complicated to be to be done and documented that it got laterally load tested, which is a test to prove it doesn't want to rip out of the building when somebody is leaning their butt on a railing having a drink or having a smoke. All right, so let's continue playing. He's almost done. A lot of people are using these balconies to live, to uh, sit on. Again, it's a fire escape, but uh, so again, walls look good, I, uh, but we'll need to take a look inside and, and see, make sure that uh, there's no, no internal damage. So as you can see there on this examination, let's move on to the next one that we're going to show. Um, you, uh, you have an issue. Um, with there's a fire escape inside that, that's gonna be a five year rule on that fire escape, but it's gonna be a six year rule on the balconies that use the fire escape has to use a little portion of it. Otherwise, on a day to day, the people are out there on the balcony having a smoke, having tea, doing whatever they have to do, you know what I'm saying? To, uh, to basically utilize the building that they pay rent at. Okay, so now let's take a look at another one. This is another SB721 inspection that has a gray area. Is this SB721 or is this really a fire escape inspection? Because both will satisfy the city. So let's take a look at this one and have it play for you. Uh, way too wobbly. Yeah. Cement is... And the cement is not holding the yeah, hole that well. Yeah. It, it's incorrectly done here, there, and there. So. Right, would it pass a low test? This is a uh, walkway. So. So no, okay, no, keep it going. Pass a low test. Okay. This looks like it's a crack in the two by six. All right, so hold right. that there. So as you can see, what's holding these cement slabs up above is wood. Wood superstructure and then wood planking. And then on top of that wood planking, somebody put in a two to four inch thick piece of cement. And that's and it's every four feet square as you go down the walkway. So is this SB721 or is this a fire escape? This is still an SB721. So let's continue letting it play. 
Okay. Is under the stairs. The epoxy here has the same issue as the other part. Yeah, it's it not should have been hydraulic cement, not epoxy. Should have been hydraulic cement. It's not as bad as the other part, but it still has all of it. The whole entire rail issues. needs to be re cemented. Re cemented. The whole entire rail needs to be redone and re cemented. Here's the dry rot area that was obviously creaking as I was stepping right above on this walkway. Yep. Suspect requiring further investigation. Very suspect requiring further investigation. There's a similar issue on the second story of the cracking in the cement. That looks like it's similar to the lower story where it's every single rectangle has cracks or one or at least one. So it looks like there's some rot up here with the light bolts and the stairs being supported. There's some wood rot right here. I'll do it. The railing has the same issue up here as below. Where it's not the right the epoxy. Epoxy. Maybe more kind of cement. So we can't take the lateral load test. Yeah, we'll fail the so lateral load test. Down below, the railings are all loose. Up above, the railings are all loose. And all these, you need to have a test of some kind, which is not asked for. It's kind of left up to the whoever's inspecting. But I recommend all railings must be, in the SB721s, must be laterally low tested. And that's 200 pounds in any direction. And this, this railing is supposed to res uh, resist 200-pound lateral low test roughly every five feet on that not only at the posts but every five feet later you want to put you want to put a lateral low test push on all these railings on every balcony at every every height that has that's based on wood okay let's continue there's a lot of cracks in the cement there 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 there. Again, 15 to 30 there. seconds only, snip it just. All right, so what do we have here? Every four feet, there's a crack. And what, what's the crack? It's heat and contraction will cause a crack. All these, all these cement slabs usually have rebar running in them, so there's never gonna be a major collapse of any kind, but it's made to take load. But these cracks are happening also when water gets in, okay? Water gets in, gets to the rebar, which is not coated, these rebars turn brown, and when they turn brown, they start rust jacking, and they start growing, so a 5 eighths round uh, rebar becomes three-quarters round as it grows, and it tells the cement, hey, I'm going to crack you. So what are you supposed to put on all of these? What's the membrane examination on this? It's going to tell you, I don't see any Thompson's water seal on this. And I don't see any sort of a membrane covering on here. It could be a piece of raised rubber. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you can, on after you put this cement down, you can put a quarter-inch rubber down the whole thing with the raised circles that are non-slip surfaces, and that's a membrane. Right now, there is no membrane here, and I can't see any Thompson's water seal as a shiny thing to keep the those cement slab that are two inches to four inches thick from getting water and absorbing water that goes to the rebar that causes all these cracks. So now I got to get all these cracks are feeding water now to the wood structure below, which is heavy construction, uh, you know, beams plus these wood slats that they built these cement pieces on top. Let's continue going. Okay. Pretty much almost every single one of these rectangles has a crack on it. So, so look so at that walkway. Creaking right here. As you put weight on it. Are you, are you recording that statement? Yeah. This is why it's important that you have inspectors recording and photographing everything about a fire, about this balcony. You need a lot of information for the client, but also every now and then when you're speaking with the city official who will give the client either a 30 day, 60 days, or 90 days to get this done, they really need to know just how bad things are. And there's nothing better for a city official to make that determination when he can get to watch a video. 
know what I'm saying? So most videos are five to 10 minutes long only. Photographs are 50, 75, 100 photographs on a building this size. You got to get a good report to the to the city official because what? Keep watching. You'll see. We'll see how dangerous this little corner may may or may not be. I'm sure, you can hear that. Definitely a safety issue. So the rebar is pop. All right, let's talk about rebar on treads. When these cement treads are built at a factory, they create a rectangle. They lay some rebar in there, and as you can see, the rebar is not coated. 25, 50 years ago. Today's rebar, a lot of times it comes coated and they have some sort of membrane that keeps water from ever getting to it because nobody was putting Thompson's water seal. So these treads that have no water seal and so the membrane, there is no membrane here. That membrane that would have kept the water off of the tread and from getting inside the tread, which gets to the rebar, this is what's happening on the slabs up above. There's rebar growing and and so this rebar spalls at the bottom. You can't see it on the walkway that we just came from because there's wood there blocking your view. You know what I'm saying? So, but these treads don't have anything below and it quickly spalls. No tread is ever gonna break in half on you ever. It's got rebar reinforcing, but you'll see cracks giving you indication that that tread has failed. And the only cure for a cracked um, tread is replacing that cement tread with a new one you have to put a membrane on, which is Thompson's water seal kind of product on, on these every two to three years. And then once it spalls like it did here, you still have to seal it with some cement just to stop any more moisture getting to that rebar. Right now it's exposed rebar. Let's continue playing. Popping out and causing cracking in the cement due to the water, water. damage and the water, water intrusion and penetration because there's no sealant. There's no sealant. And it rusts the rebar first. It rusts the rebar first, so the rebar will explode, the rebar will explode ex and expand, causing the concrete to, to be at its, down. Down. Yeah, it's been, at its biggest point of causing it to rip out. It looks to be a little bit of mold or a dry rot here under this wood, under this edge of the fire escape. Yeah. So, what you see here, guys, white dry rot turns white wetness from above that the cement slabs that act like sponges feed 24 7 365 days a year a wet cement sponge above feeds and keeps all this wood wet so you get wet rot then it becomes dry rot okay then you throw in a carpenter ant or a or a termite to come in here and eat and do whatever and all of a sudden you have a weakened wooden superstructure that basically can't hold the load. A fireman can't hold the load of tenants. And that's why these things need to be investigated. But some of them are open just like this. My God, what kind of photographs can I give you on an open system? Tons. If I get underneath here, because I'm crawling on my belly over here to get you this information, um, we need to drill holes. And then we need to use cameras to get in there and get visual pictures and video of what we see towards the back and towards the front. And again, you have some other technology out there uh, regarding wetness. So there's, uh, there's, there's meters out there and diagnostics to see how wet something is and, uh, and just what the condition is. So every inspection group will come with different, but there's nothing better than a hole that shows inside that shows the, the types of rot, wet rot, dry rot, okay? Um, termites, carpenter ants, and animals with cage, with uh, with nests and things like that in there. Okay, let's continue. Yep, there's a huge crack right above you. And this thing doesn't have any Thompson's water seals, so guess too. what happens? So we have to walk that whole thing, all right? So that right there, because it had two stairs coming on either end, I could have called this a fire escape or I could have called this an SB721. So in some cases, the people are going to do five years on this whole structure or they're going to do six years on this whole structure. You do one, you don't have to do the other.
because you're going to treat it. The inspection is the same. Okay. Um, so in some cases, you're going to have both a, a real metal fire escape here and a wood SB721 system here. You're going to have two reports, five years here, six years here. Or in some cases, there's so much overlap. Pick one. Make it a fire escape inspection or make it an SB721 inspection, but you don't have to do both. And this is one of those examples. All right, let's open up this next one. All right, these uh, people are building enclosures consultants. And when I watched this, man, it was a great video. They went into every nitty gritty detail about, you know, what this looks like, what could be. And so if you really want to get into the, the in-depth of the wood and the reporting and what dry rot looks like and what carpenter ants look like and termites, and you want to learn this stuff, because, you know, sometimes you have condo associations and HOAs and city officials who just want to know every nitty gritty. Watch this for an hour. You're going to learn a lot. Okay. What to do. And this is an open one. Look how open it is. There's no sheetrock in my way. There's no Dura rock or um, um, what do you call it? Cement board or anything in my way. My God, this is so easy. Give me photographs. Show me how bad everything is. Okay. And, and this is great. So when we get these and we can just see everything, this is great. You can paint over it. But, you know, whenever you have wood surfaces, they're all flat. They're all great. As soon as you have rot of any kind, they're all undulating. And that's what you're going to see. And there's no way to hide wood rot unless you have stucco or sheetrock blocking your view from underneath. And you must drill holes. Or you can run a... a a piece of, uh, you can run a, uh, like a track right down the middle, three inches wide or four inches wide, down the whole length of the 10 or 12 feet. And then you're going to put a netting back up there or some sort of cover so animals don't get back in till six years later. You don't want this hole to be there so that birds and, and other animals can get back in. You know what I'm saying? Um, but again, I need to get a, a, a camera in there and I want to look towards the back and see how it's tied to the building. And I want to look to the front and see how the nose of this. And I should be able to isolate if you have a problem in my investigations, whether we have to do any more removal of, of any materials, such as sheetrock and or, or uh, um, cement board of any kind. I'll be able to isolate it to the middle, to the left, to the right, or the whole thing. Because you're going to have the whole thing, just uh, the membrane above is just a piece of garbage. Okay, let's go on to the next so if you want to know in-depth explanation about SP721, that's the one to do. All right, before we go on to this next video, let's open up to see if anybody has any questions. I'll give it a few seconds for people to give me questions. On everything said so far, you agree? You disagree? Tell me. What's going Cisco, on? I got a quick, I got a question. Do we ever, do you ever load test the balconies? It doesn't say that. It says that for fire escapes, all fire escapes must hold 100 pounds per square foot. But here's the funny thing. A balcony is usually built by any architect. And Alan, you're an architect, right? All balconies are usually built to 60 pounds a square foot or 40 pounds a square foot. Or is there any other mathematics that I'm not aware of? I don't, that I don't know. But my, my point is that if you see something suspect, I mean, or not, not even see, just a load test to see if it'll hold up. Correct. Right. So, but they, they require that you do a preload test evaluation and it's an opinion that they want on SB 721s. They want opinions as the code is written. The load test is, is optional for the clients to say, Hey, I want to load test these things um, just to make sure that they can handle based on what we see was the construction. It was either built for 40 pounds a square foot, 60 pounds a square foot, because only fire escapes are built to a hundred pounds per square foot and fire escapes must be low tested. And a lot of times, if you're going to have a an opinion affidavit or, or opinion certification on a fire escape, it usually comes with a disclaimer letter that sounds like this. To the best of my information, knowledge, and belief, the fire escape is ready for its intended use today. There is no low test. In lieu of a low test, it's an opinion, and it has a disclaimer letter. It's going to be the same disclaimer letter on all balconies. To the best of my information, knowledge, and belief. This balcony, in lieu of a low test, is ready for its intended use today as per SB 721. And because I didn't low test it, you can't bring me to court in case it does collapse. 
Because if it does collapse and you want to drag me to court, you have to show that negligence. You have to show, I don't know what I was doing. But if I have photographs and video that everything was great, you know, a year, two or three ago, and something happened today, and I can prove no negligence, I'm, I'm, I'm great. But a low test, like you said, Alan, is one of the things that you can you can use to help everybody sleep at night and not go to not go to court. So, guys, here we have something here. Before you start playing it, um, this is what happens on any 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 three family building um, that you have in your rent out apartments. And I'm going to give you an example of how bad things can go. But at the same time, it's not just how bad things can go. It's who can it happen to that is going to cause media attention. It's going to cause all kinds of issues for the city, for the state, for the local, you know, first responders. So let me paint the picture for you. In Wildwood, New Jersey, every year they have one of the one of the biggest and the massive uh, get-togethers of all the fire departments, primarily from the Mississippi to the East Coast, right? And so everybody comes down for a week. It's a great, it's on the beach. Wildwood is on the beach. So it's beach time. The firemen go to these uh, conventions, these expos, and they there's fire trucks, there's everything down there. And most of these guys rent Airbnbs um, in the area on the, on the main drag near the beach. And they all just hang out there, and it's a week's adventure. And so a lot of these people are counting on a safe location for themselves as well as their wives and children. And look what happened here. Not just to one floor, to the entire three-story porch only, no stairs, nothing there for you to go from floor to floor. You just get out your door and you have this huge platform, porch, deck that you just look out into the ocean and it's only you, it's private. Let's see what happens. From a surveillance camera mounted inside this new view of last weekend's multi-level deck collapse in Wildwood and the panic that followed. But it's completely okay. collapsed and there's people under there. People were on and below two upper level decks that came crashing down Saturday evening. The second level falling first. On the video, a man appears from the rubble, his hand on the front door, before others come rushing from inside to open it and help. Amid the chaos, a man then emerges from the debris with a young child in his arms. They fall through the doorway just as the third floor deck collapses. This gentleman's actions were heroic and life-saving, in my opinion. Don't, don't fall on that Police body camera video we first brought you Thursday captured a team effort to rescue a volunteer firefighter trapped under debris. More than 20 people, including children and firefighters from South and North Jersey, were hurt in the deck collapse at this seven unit con. So, if you guys look, the in, all three decks fell, collapsed. For what reason? It's under investigation, but we can tell why. But look at that roof. That roof is cantilevered out, and what it used to have for legs down to the lower porch, to the lower porch below that, and down all the way down to the ground, is no longer there. So all these people are working, and that roof is ready to collapse. Okay? That roof up there is ready to collapse because it's cantilevered out so far, it needs legs to the ground, and they're gone. So let's continue playing. Condo building on Baker Avenue. Those firefighters and their families in Wildwood at the time for the annual New Jersey Firemen's Convention. It's unclear if investigators are any closer to figuring out what caused the collapse. I reached out to the city's construction official, but did not hear back by our deadline. In Wildwood, I'm Ted Greenberg. All right, so let's get back. Let's open it up to any questions about this incident, about what could happen. This is what could happen. So any questions about that event that occurred could have could have, could have occurred anywhere USA, but um, it affected firefighters. All right, we got a quiet crowd, so hopefully we'll have some questions from the crowd at the end of all this. 
let's take a look at what you want to have in a, in a good inspection by a good team. You want to have photos. You want to have videos. So I'm going to give you an example of what happens that the information that you provide must be so that everybody understands what needs to happen, what needs to, what needs to be done. So an initial pre-evaluation, you need to not only take photos, but you should generalize so that the client can get a summary report in video form so that they can look at it um, and get an idea of just how good things are or how bad things are and whether or not they can fix it themselves and satisfy the the reinspection uh whether or not they need uh, to have you know they can hire a handyman out there that has a little bit more skills has some tools um and will that satisfy the reinspection okay and then in some cases you need to hire a real contractor with real licenses to, and in some cases pulling real permits because now it's a combination of not just you know the design professional and others acceptable to the building official watching the project it may also have a permit on it that needs construction control signature from an architect or an engineer, and it may need the sign-off of the city officials to be involved because there is a permit. There is penetration into the walls. There's re there is reattachment back to the building, and as soon as you penetrate any wall, it triggers a permit. But in some cases, routine maintenance doesn't trigger a permit. General painting and reinforcement of, of things that already exist doesn't trigger a permit, but penetrate a wall, permit. Extend something and penetrate a wall, permit, okay? Put back a missing piece, sometimes it doesn't need a permit. We identify that the pickets are missing, put them back, okay? So what we have here is a proper examination of a structure, and I wanna show you that, can owners fix things themselves? Sure they can, here's proof. We had a, a, a good sized project that needed to get done, some things that we saw on a structure that was 15 to 25 years old or older. We had nails popping with all kinds of things. And we say, you, you got to fix this. You got to do this. Uh, in a video walk down, we go up taking photographs. We come down video pointing. And sometimes the video pointing is enough for a skilled homeowner to do the job. Listen to this. Need some routine maintenance in order to bring it back so that it can pass. So at this time we can't proceed to a load test or to a certification by opinion affidavit simply because it has a few issues and we're talking about 25 percent of this fire escape so there's a minimum in order for it to pass but there's also a maximum that would basically get another 10 to 15 years out of that and we'll, we'll point the, we'll point those things out as we walk along so i got myself and inspector manny Quinn here also with me and we'll just sort of speak and uh, talk about different things so um starting up here Again, one of, one, one of the things you want to do is you want to make sure that you, you pop every, any and all nails that are coming up that can hurt children's feet. Got to get them back down. Number two, if you got any boards loose, you want to use deck make, deck make screws. No more nails because what happens is through freeze and thaw, those nails just keep coming up. Screws don't come up. Screws are here, nails are here, and, and so just screws. Any joints, seal it. You start sealing all these joints, you're already uh, you're going to up this for 10 years. Uh, metal gusset reinforcement, you're going to get 10 to 15 years out of this. So let's continue. Any any issues up here, Manny? Uh, they're pretty good up okay. here. All right, so uh, I think they... Looks they, like they use screws up here. Yep, screws up here. I would definitely get into the joints, get all these joints sealed. But she's pretty uh -huh. good up here. Clean out any area. I would power wash it because some of this some of this material, if you get a power wash, you get a lot of trees in the area. If you power wash this, then you stain it. That's going to make this a 10 to 15 year... Uh, save any nails pop and you got to pound them back and anywhere with water or snow can accumulate seal it with clear sil silicone uh, paintable silicone but again get all your nails back down nothing that can cut the hands and up there were pretty good no obstructions so a lot of times you can't have these pots and plants you have to have a clear 24 to 36 inch walk and if you're going to have something like this over here you have to make sure that these obstructions don't obstruct this so um, again you, there's certain things that are that you can't have up here, but you can't block. No bicycles, no trash. All right, let's go, let's go walking down. Again, this side looks pretty good, Manny. Any questions on this side? No, this right. side being up the upper one is in good shape. Yep, considering it's the most exposed. Here, yes. Uh, we have this all again, nails that are popping up. So anybody with that has no shoes on, they got to cut their feet. All <coughs> those nails back down, and anything that's still a little soft like this one, screws, no nails. Okay, so just get some deck mate screws, a good good gun. 
As you see, the bounce that I got here, Manny, so we're definitely going to talk about the fact that whoever cut these stringers cut them too tight. So we're going to have to sister the stringers, pick up a little beef. All right, coming on here, going down. You got the header. The header's already all cracked, and, and uh, you can see over here that we need to uh, use um, uh, uh, strapping. The metal gussets, the galvanized metal gussets. Okay, let's keep coming down. Any old crack board such as this one, well, I'm glad I pulled this one. Any and all crack board, just take it out, put a new one. But this one, this is a trip hazard. And again, I, I didn't, um, any any cracks that are on them, when you when you walk down and your foot and it goes like that, this is what happens when coming down without even knowing you're gonna fall down these set of stairs. So any old any old wood wood that has a crack front, replace the pieces. Coming down, any? Yep. Now I use this thing as a pointer. All right. Looking up, we need a, a metal, a metal uh, galvanized metal uh, triangle in the corner, and again, with screws, you gotta use, uh, um, what do you call it, the uh, joist hangers. hangers on this side here, because all the nails are now covered by the other side, so just joist hangers on this whole thing. All this piece here, just make sure that everything is sealed, anything that can accumulate water, seal all these nails, some of these, again, my, my boots, are catching a lot of these nails. Little kids, they're gonna cut their feet and that's a liability. Um, you know, some of them can get infections. So anything like this, you can actually put this flag through. As you can see, that's a quarter inch. So as water gets in, it rots these things. And a lot of times for these things to pass the lateral load test, you're gonna need a piece of uh, angle that you buy at Home Depot, the galvanized gussets in here and you screw it, screw it and they're good or they have the one inch strap that goes all the way across. And you basically screw it here, screw it there, screw it there, and then basically there's our rigidity, including any corners. So whatever licensed carpenter is going to do this job, he has to understand what needs to get done. He'll be he'll be guided in one of two ways. Uh, this a lot of times these jobs can either have engineer oversight, and a lot of times residential they don't have engineer oversight. They can also be guided by a permit, so that the city official is the final one that comes in or gets certified by. Uh, Firescape Inspection Company, or um, he just has to know what he's doing in order to make sure that what he does get is certifiable. Otherwise, for somebody to reinspect it and then not to pass doesn't make any sense because you're going to keep paying for the reinspection. So uh, all this is standard, just general maintenance looks good. So right now looks pretty good. We have another floor. It's going to just repeat itself. It's going to say broken treads, nails, corners. You know, and this thing is 50 to 25 years old already. This client wants to get another 5, 10, or even 15 years on this deck. He doesn't want to spend, you know, uh, $10,000, $15,000 to rebuild this whole rear porch. He wants to, you know, make it pass. So we said, okay, here's the video. We finger pointed a lot of things, common sense. And if an owner has a little bit of skill set, can he do it? Let's see. Right now, let's take uh, the revisit. I did the revisit on this. And to my surprise, when the owners tell me they're going to take care of themselves, nine out of ten times, it's never going to happen correctly. They're going to try to cheat it. So we went back and we said, okay, let's see what you did, Mr. Homeowner, that had nothing but a video to tell you what needed to be done. That's why photos and videos are key to see. And if he had the skill set, the time, and the patience, which he did, he may have had help from a from a you know a a handyman, but somebody helped him or not, or he had a general contract that come in as a friend and help or not, but otherwise he did this all himself. Here we go. Watch this. Firescape engineers inspect the summary video. Here we are in North Reading. This is a reinspection of a wood structure where the work was done by the homeowner, uh, with or without the help of a carpenter. But let's take a look. So the Firescape was in uh, fair condition to begin with when we first noticed some some issues so some issues that were originally on this staircase here total rebuild of the entire staircase obviously the client is showing some skill set or whoever in building a, a standard staircase to, to grade to code so looking back we had some issues with the with the pieces up here as mentioned in the original what he did is just capped it more than sufficient he buttoned up all the any loose um, pieces added uh, some screws here's some of the typical brackets that we were looking for to basically reinforce uh, 
threw in some joist hangers there as we talked about added some additional screws there's original joist hangers put in a new post here as you can see added some stability as you can see here okay stiffness look at this this is exactly what we wanted to see these are all things you buy at Home Depot come in and restrap redo just make it safe you know get it in there so that the building inspector the iron work uh, the uh, and the structural engineer the registered architect or the licensed or certified inspector is comfortable with this going for another five years so as you can see good construction good you know everything got put back that was requested on the original okay you know cap over corners as you can see here even some of the some of this you know they they strapped it look at all the caulking inside those cracks okay this basically stops any more any more uh, what we call freeze and thaw and ice jacking so got it so all the pieces got done some additional pieces got removed look good good stuff a lot of cop a lot of stuff like this can be done by the homeowner but again in some cases it does need a permit from the city uh, because uh, some some can be done on the homeowner's permit some if it's a inspection of a or repair of a investment property it does need a permit but again that's to be decided by the city official to how far he wants to take it but this might be on the routine maintenance which might not need a permit look so you got all the reinforcement look at that see that was suggested and that was done that looks good using screws not nails because there was some crack reinforce this one reinforce that one you see brackets strappings looks good you know joist hangers that came into play all these you can buy at Home Depot as you can see moved some of the pieces so just all common sense stuff put a new top kept the original look at all the strap so guys let's get back to the website so can homeowners take care of their own problems yes can they have assistance from handyman off of Craigslist and also contractors off out of the yellow pages yes so this is a guide that says what you get told in some rare cases you can self repair and self uh self uh paint or or secure your your balcony systems okay now we're getting to a point where we're going to have some escape down at the bottom guys okay. right there the other side see the metal one right there so right now this is one of those buildings that i could have a a fire escape affidavit for five years and then i can have an sb721 on the rest of this but the rest of it is really a wood fire escape they have some metal and they have wood i would recommend to this client to basically inspect this building every five years and everything up above and all the wood stairs, everything's going to be on a five-year inspection plan. This is not an SB721 because it has main staircases to the ground. People will move refrigerators up and down these stairs to the very top. And on the very top rear, it's a ladder to the ground from the third floor, okay? A drop ladder. And on the, on the back side of this thing is these staircases to the ground. So let's continue playing be okay also but i would have him double check this is fairly new in the past 10 to 15 years here but he seems to know what needs to get done in order to reinforce treads this is where we did most of the inspection so the failure rate on this thing because of the railings is probably in the 25 percentile um in just the adding of necessary uh tre so repair pieces on on the wood that's on this deck and this also includes there's a ladder on the back that just needs uh, to be painted greased and it needs a one of the one of the pieces uh painted red um so between the long video and the short video he knows what he needs to get done uh, but again it's only a 25 percent 
Uh, if he has to replace any wood on the, this deck, then he already knows if he needs to reinforce any of these with carriage bolts going through. But it, it seems like, it's, like I said, for 70 years old, the system is not too bad. And if he just goes in and buttons up the system, give it a little bit more tender love and care, find out which one of these woods are rotten and replace them because he's covered them with metal sheet. So uh, between that, make sure all the treads are tight. The railings are all tight going up. This uh, fire escape should be ready uh, for us to certify in lieu of low test because again, uh, it's all wood. It's a wood structure. It's probably 70 years old at least. So he, by his estimation. Perfect. All right. Back to the website. All right. Let's see if we have any questions before we go on to the next quick little video. Again, just showing you the difference between SB721s and fire escapes. Because every now and then, as soon as you throw a ladder on there or any way to the ground, it's the hybrid. It's going to fall into fire escapes or it's going to fall into SB721s. So let's open it up to some questions. Do we have any questions that came out of there? I hear oh. somebody. Yeah. I had a quick question. Um, so homeowners can do routine maintenance, but what about inspecting by themselves? Yeah, it's not allowed. So the, uh, obviously they can learn how to pre-inspect Get the thing ready if you have that skill set. You know, go go look at it yourself. Pick the obvious, fix the obvious before you call in a third party inspector. The law is very clear. The only people that can report to the owner and report back to the city official is the design professional. So you can be a civil engineer, structural engineer, a registered architect, and then others acceptable to the building official and the fire official that can go do these do these examinations. Okay. So depending who's controlling the SB721, it can only be done by a third-party person that has the right credentials to provide a report back to the client and certification with the right credentials and or provide a document of deficiency and say, hey, these are the deficiencies that need to be addressed uh, on this. And they have to have some documentation, some credentials that the city official says, this is a good report. I accept this because it's following the law design professional or others acceptable to the building official. And even at that time, the building official has the right to say, I need you to pay, have yourself peer reviewed because you're not giving me enough information. Now, even though you're a deck inspection company, um, I need, I need more. I don't got time to review your information. Please have it stamped by an architect or an engineer. And that's called a peer review document that finally makes it to the owner as well as the city official. Uh, any other questions out there? So, so, okay. So say I do SB 721 and am I, is that satisfactory or do, do I also need to get a fire escape certification as well? So would I need both at the same time? Yes. In some cases, when you have clear fire escapes and clear balconies, you're going to have to do one every five years, the other one every six years. But in some cases where you have just one system and it's kind of still getting everybody to the ground on, on, on a walkway that feeds two stairs. Don't forget, when you go out your door, you can go to the left and get down to the ground. You can go down to the right and get down to the ground. That is a fire escape system. That's an egress system, not only to get you out during a fire, but day to day you go in and out of these things. And when you bring it in a fridge or a couch, you use the same system. It's a fire escape. It's not. Um it's not an SB721 examination, but it's your choice. So if all of a sudden you feel that it's more uh, resembling an SB721, then every six years you do the SB721 examination and you tell the city official you're not doing fire escapes every five years because you are covered under the six year. And then if it's a three to six examination for condos, it's every nine years. So it all depends on how often you want to be examining this. Any other questions? Thank you. I have a question. So, go ahead. What's the average cost of a SB721 inspection? That's a that's a great question. Some people are going <clears> to <throat> let's break it up into four phases, okay? When you do an SB721 examination, whoever these people are calling, they should be coming out on average for a low fee or no fee when it comes to do 
to get the logistics of the job. Sometimes you can get all the logistics you want through a Google search or the Google Maps and you get everything you need. And, and you know that you can get on these fire escapes with a ladder. You don't have to go very high. You can bring in a lift. And everything must, must be done from the outside normally. You don't want to disturb tenants and walking through my apartment and doing all these things. So if you can get on this with a lift or a ladder, costs are going to be wherever they're going to be, but you're not disturbing any tenants. But every now and then, you're going to get a, a building. That's why the first examination that uh, is a low fee or no fee that rolls into the future fees of, you know, listen, the left side of this building is wide open, a lift or a ladder gets on these people, but the right side, top floor, I need to go through the apartments. There's no other way. It's too tight to the building next door. A ladder won't do anything and a lift won't do anything. So I have to get through those three apartments and that's where you're gonna get your next cost. The next phase from the initial phase um, is where you say, okay, I'm gonna, it's gonna be uh, $489, $689, uh, $1,200 per balcony inspection because it's how much is a contractor going to charge you to drill holes. If there's no holes, then there's just a much going to be much lower because everything's wide open. I can see all the trusses. I can see everything. There's no sheetrock covering, you know, and no, uh, uh, what do you call it? A cement board of any kind covering that. Okay. Stucco. Um, so that's the next cost you're going to get from these people that you're asking costs from. So they have to do a site visit first, check out how difficult everything is. Then the next step is we got to come back. We got to drill holes. So a carpenter or a construction company is going to come back. They're going to drill holes. The first time you ever do these examinations, it's going to be a higher cost because you have to drill these holes every 16 inches so I can get between the, the, the joists. And again, I want to put my camera in so I can look back to the wall, go look back to the nose, and then at the same time check for uh, wet rot, dry rot, uh, carpenter ants, termites. That's what I'm looking for. And I need to be able to put a cap back on this hole because this hole is going to be there for the life of the building. It's going to be every six years, I got to come back, take that the cap off, throw my cameras inside, look left, look right, keep looking, photograph the everything, videotape whenever possible through your through your system. And then what happens is there's other technology out there, guys. Infrared, there's, a, you know, moisture. Inf but the best to me is a hole where you look inside, you're looking for animals, you're looking for termites, you're looking for white or uh, wet rot, okay? So that fee to drill these holes so we can have the inspector come back and look in these holes, okay? The approved inspector is the one that's going to come back and look in the holes, Um and so it's it's a process. So step one is a quick visit. Step two is already I'm coming there to drill holes. And while we're there drilling holes and we happen to be on your platform drilling holes, it's a great time to load test that rail. Put 200 pounds uh, of load in three locations, if not five, depending how long. But at either end and in the middle or at either end and two or three pushes in the middle every five feet or so. It's called a lateral load test. It doesn't say it in the in the code, but if you use the fire escape code to help you, everything is 100 pounds per square foot, or 60 and uh, 60 pounds, or 40 pounds per square foot for a load test on the on the structure. But it's always 200 pounds, no matter what, in the railing systems that people rest their butt on, and some people just lean on, rest on, fall into, and that railing's got to resist you from get pop, popping all the way through. Okay. So now let's talk about uh, the final cost. Once we get these investigations, somebody generates a report of what to do. That's your bid document. So the people who find what needs to be done or your pass is one group, but then all of a sudden to get bids, the same people who inspected it to certify it is the same people who inspect it. And they now create a document to say, Here's what you need to do. Do it yourself. Get some help getting it done. Then call me back when you're done and don't, and nothing is going to close up. If you are going to have to remove some sheetrock or some uh, some Dura rock from the, the ceiling, we know exactly where you have to go because it was the left side that the membrane. You might have to have a new membrane put on your deck. 
what deck, what membrane there usually replaces the same membrane that was there before. Okay, so that's how that's how that that uh, pre pre inspection goes. It's gonna tell people. And what do you get in the last cost? Three bids, and you have to have a document of photographs and video that basically instructs three people on how to do it. The homeowners who want to do it themselves, the homeowners who want to use a, a you know somebody out of the uh, internet, such as a you know a handyman because the work is not that difficult. And then some people that are like, dude, this is a train wreck. I really need a contractor with a license with insurance uh, to get this thing done. Okay. So that's the cost. And where's the variation? Uh, the variation is uh, at the beginning is really drilling those holes for the very first time. You know, is it 500 bucks? Is it a thousand bucks? Is it 1500 bucks per platform to initiate the holes? And then what's the repair cost? It's subject to how the, the size and complexity and, and what really needs to be done. But it's just standard bidding. And then you need to ask the city for an extension of time because you're dealing with it. But everybody here needs to have a deadline by January 1, 2025. No exceptions. It's right in the law. And you've had six years <laughs> to get this done. And everybody's waiting for the last minute. Okay. So that answers that question there. Let's play one last video here so that everybody can see uh, just some of the things we come up against. Go ahead. Let's play this last one. Hey, it's Cisco Kid, the balcony guy in California, SB721s. What do you do? SB326. What do you do and how often do you do it? How about a fire escape examination? And what is this? Is this a, a balcony or is this a fire escape? Come here, let me tell you some of the things we look at. We're going to look to make sure that there's no carpenter ants or any damage. And if it's covered by anything, we have to drill holes every 16 inches and get in there with a camera and look. Come underneath here. Same thing here. We're going to do the same. we got to get underneath. Whoever's going to do this has got to do both. Then we're going to make sure the railings are nice and tight, including a low test, to make sure none of these railings can fall over when you put your tailbone on it. Now come over here. We're going to look at things like this. And look at that. Look at all that rot. That ladder is hand is hanging onto what? So come here, get closer. This ladder is incomplete to grade. You can't get on this. If you're a little kid or a grandmother, how do you get onto this ladder without climbing over? So there's some craziness happening here with the ladders, and that's all liability. Oh, but they have it there. Yeah, we call that pre-existing non-conforming, but sometimes it's a liability today. And so when you know that it's wrong, we can fix everything, including a metal ladder, put in a little gate there, put in a little gate here that opens in so people can get on this ladder and get to the ground. That's a proper inspection. SB721, 326, or this is going to be a fire escape because it has a ladder to ground, turning this not from a SB721 inspection, it's a fire escape inspection every five years because of this one ladder. It's an egress, so it's not an SB721. You gotta learn these things. Cisco, the California balcony guy. Firescape services, as well as balconyservicesnetwork.com. All right. Now, uh, what we have here is if you need to have a fire escape and it's metal, you know, you really want to call the Firescape Services Network. You're subject to the the uh, code is 1032.2, right? Um, otherwise, what do we have here? Uh, for California, here's your code. IFC, it's 1104.16, which translates into 1032.2.1.3. You want to read the code? Click on the click on the links below and read it to your heart's content. The IBC doesn't apply, but it's the International Building Code. And what do they say about firescapes nationwide? They say all firescapes must be examined and or tested, meaning the California Code now says you must low test your firescapes as well as have them inspected. And it's every five years. And when you look at it, the IBC Code has always covered all exterior, steel or wooden stairways, balconies, bridges. But they don't have the five-year. There is no five-year rule on IBC. And that's why when, since they controlled it for 100 years, there was never a five-year push. The only time you really came into a five-year push was in Massachusetts. In 1975, they made it a mandatory IBC code that you must do a, a firescape examination every five years. No other state 
for a hundred years inspected their fire escapes other than Massachusetts. But now the IFC finally grabbed it in 2012 and they said, Hey, you must inspect these fire escapes every five years. You must certify them and you must load test them. And it came out in the IFC in 2012, but California did not ex adopt this till January 1, 2022. The SB 721 was adopted in 2019. <laughs> okay, NFPA. The NFPA has put out uh, a request that uh, the authority having jurisdiction shall accept by low test or other evidence of strength. And they've had that since 1927. But again, not every state is an NFPA state. But if you want to talk about the word low test, it's been in the books since 1927. And what's that mean? That means if your fire escape is 75 to 125 years old, you will conclude your certification with a low test to really test the structure of the wall, what it's attached to, what's it going through bolted into. Um, otherwise, if you have a fire escape that's 25 years old, galvanized, uh, a lot of times an opinion affidavit is more than sufficient simply because there's still a young fire escape. Okay. Uh, let's talk about OSHA. OSHA requires that during renovations, during construction, during repairs and alterations, you must have a means of egress to the ground at all times. What's that mean? Your fire escape must be the first thing you certify, not the last thing. But if all of a sudden you, you got caught and the fire escape is not good, put up some scaffolding. Put up scaffolding. If the, if the building is occupied, you need to put in a scaffolding tower that has uh, – Stairs in it that are three feet wide. The, the rise and run is 7-Eleven all the way to grade. That must be approved and accepted to the building official and the fire official who both are going to use it in case of an emergency. Okay? If it's, a, if it's a construction site that there is no people inside, but there's just construction workers, the building official and the fire official may allow a tower of uh, scaffolding, and it only has 20 two inches or 24 inches wide and a steeper grade at 45 degrees on this tower because nobody's inside that building other than construction workers during the day. Okay. So that's sort of the conclusion of this seminar. Let's see if we have any questions out there, uh, especially from our partners there in Sacramento. Um, and everybody has to understand that once you get your fire escape and or your balconies up to snuff, they should re recertify every five or every six years with you do proper maintenance. Okay. You just can't ignore them anymore. So let's see what kind of questions you have out there for us so that we can conclude this SB 721 seminar. Looks like everybody's nice and silent. We overwhelmed everybody. Everybody just learned everything everything they needed to know that's how fabulous we are here but again don't forget to visit the website once you uh, scroll back to the very top the firescape services network is one great website to go to.com and the other one that you want to go to is you want to go to the balcony services network.com and what's that page do that page is just going to get you the answers you need so you can satisfy people who have a ton of questions and to get them going, they need to get moving on this. And again, to get themselves back under the insurance umbrella. As soon as you start inspecting your balconies, you're covered by insurance. Otherwise, what's going to happen very soon and within the year, if you don't have anything on your balconies certified and an event occurs with tenants and or firefighters, it's not going to be covered by insurance because you're not doing what the law requires, and that is certifying your balconies and or your fire escapes. We want to thank everybody that uh, participated. This has got recorded, so in case you want a copy of this for your team, please let us know. Uh, we'll reach out to the various fire departments and the various management companies and the various people out there, various Reg 4 companies that have L.A. L.A., you know, has Reg 4, um, and this uh, these balconies are going to be part of that in, in their future. Uh, as well as the fire escape, uh, one year is all the Reg 4 people can do. But very soon, you need to do a five-year. Well, you have to have somebody in your company, not with a Reg 4 license for one year's only, but you need the five-year also if you're going to do fire escapes. And if you're going to be doing SB 721s, uh, a lot of Reg 4 people are ready to go. They can do SB 720 examinations. Okay?
Thank you all again for attending this seminar. And if you have any questions, please give us a call at 800-649-3333. Um, Alan, you have any last parting uh, comments you want to make? No, I think I, I still learned a few more things, but good job. Ready to Thank do you. them. All right. Very good. So, uh, just so everybody run. knows, everybody down in, uh, we have Alan down in Los Angeles area. That includes San Diego. And we're up in San Francisco on Treasure Island. So we can, we handle the northern part of uh, California. Uh, Alan and our other inspectors handle the south. And uh, we somehow and sometimes meet in the middle. Everybody, thank you very much for attending this seminar. And uh, we look forward to the next seminar uh, with you in our future. Thank you. Thank you.